the mask and then just using the move brush I'll just tuck this back. In just a moment you're going to see that the shape changes quite a bit. I've just done some off-camera experimentation with different shapes because I wasn't really happy with this particular head. And just using the move brush to shift things around you're going to find that I've changed the nose and added a couple crests to the top of the head using the same tools that we've looked at so far. And just in the interest of, of time and space I've just trimmed that out and we're going to pick up in a few steps ahead uh, we're just the head has changed shape slightly. We're also going to readdress the eyeballs since the eyeball position has changed uh, once we make these changes to the head. So let's go ahead and take a look. Pull this down a bit. Pull that over. Make sure that this me inside corner, the medial canthus of the eye, make sure that that's coming off the surface of the eyeball. We don't want that to be um, sitting right on the surface of the sphere of the eye. Okay. I believe that we could actually enlarge that eye a bit. So I'm going to go back to scale. I'm going to scale that eyeball up. I'm going to go back to the skin of the head and shift all this out. Now with the eyeball selected, make sure that there are no subdivision levels on it, and then go to Geometry and click Mirror and Weld, and it will mirror that eyeball across. So now it's going to be a little bit easier to kind of spot the character in the head because he's got some spheres in there for eyes. Let's see how it feels to pull this in. using the clay tubes brush to suggest some interesting structures here. And as I'm working on this side right here, I'm looking over here to see how it changes the silhouette of the brow line. I want to bring this bone out a bit. It's called the zygomatic process. That's the corner of the cheekbone there. You can see how it's changing over on that side. Keep an eye on that because I'm looking at both sides as I work. Make sure that cheekbone arcs up very drastically, a lot like a cat skull would. Anything where the ears are sitting up higher on the head, that zygomatic bone is going to have a very uh, pronounced arc to it. So little anatomical details like that, even though you're not, it's not necessarily being seen by somebody who's an expert on animal anatomy, they do register those little anatomical keys because uh, those are predators. And we're predators, but we're also prey in the wild, so we know what things that want to eat us look like. Just sketching in some little shapes there that could be interesting to pull out later. Sometimes I'll just you know, I'll just sketch around and try and create some happy accidents because it's one thing that's difficult to get in 3D even in ZBrush are happy accidents so anything that you can do to help create an environment where you know the unexpected can happen is going to be helpful. I'm going to bring out that jaw a little bit. I don't want to give him too much of a lantern jaw like you see that that's happened from the front now but I also don't want him to be so uh, I don't want the corners of his jaw to be so deep into his head. I'm going to smooth this back. I'm trying to get rid of that deep hollow there. So there should be skin and fat inside there. So I'm just filling that in with the clay tubes brush. And stepping down a couple subdivision levels. Just trying to smooth that out. 
It's definitely a little tweak there. I'm stepping back up, and filling it in. Now I'm actually giving some consideration to pulling out a second set of horns here. That could be quite cool. You notice that we're starting to get some, some tweaked polygons and some of these edges, but there's actually going to be a fix for that that I'll show you when it becomes necessary to, to detail those areas. Right now, the polygons would be so stretched, they would be hard for us to put any detail there. But uh, there's a way to locally subdivide those places in ZBrush that will uh, that'll make, that, uh, make those little facets go away. <clears throat> Checking under perspective. I'm going to save this. I try and undo back before I pull those horns out just because I want to compare. And just barely too many tool steps away. I can't undo them all the way, so I'll just pull that back and smooth it like that. Here you can see where ZBrush remembered those horns were there, so I gotta smooth it again. So it's an interesting option. I'm just going to keep that in mind. Okay, so I do think that I want to pull something out from the back of the head here, so I'm just going to mask out the area where those horns are going to come from. Invert the mask, and using the move brush, I'm going to step down a few subdivision levels, and I'm just going to pull those shapes out. smooth, pull and smooth. There we go. And step up a subdivision level or two. Now we can clear our mask and using the clay tubes brush I'm going to feather or blend these down into the form of the head. I want these horns to have kind of a flattened plane along the top, so I'm using clay tubes holding down Z-Alt or Z-Sub. 
play in the top, kind of like an African buffalo. And we press B to go to the brush menu. I'm going to select M polish. I'm just going to polish down the top. on the underside of the tip. There we go. And go back to clay tubes. Continue some of these shapes. step up a subdivision level here. And I like having these forms kind of knuckle together at the center line of the head, so I'm just going to suggest those again. I'm going to need to break the symmetry pretty soon, meaning that we need to turn off symmetry and start working the head asymmetrically so it doesn't feel so perfectly planned. The sooner you can do that, the better, but it is going to make more work for you because you won't be able to do everything mirrored over to the opposite side. Just giving the ear some attention now. Smoothing that back to take out some of the kinks in it. Now this is a fun trick. I'm going to mask out the ear and invert the mask. Do some smoothing along the back there. Now if I take the rotate tool, drag it from the base of the ear here, the front to the tip, and then click and drag, can bring the ears out a bit, just like that. And go in with the move brush <clears throat> and tuck this back. Smooth it down. Let's clear that mask and go in with M polish again. Uh, it's right there. We can polish some of that back. M polish is a really nice kind of hybrid between flatten and, and smooth. It can be really useful. You just need to experiment with it to find how it works best for you. There's so many new brushes now, it's really just a matter of experimentation on spheres and planes and on your own little sphere sketches to see what works the best. like having this division in the tip of the nose. It's called the alar cartilage. Everyone has cartilage like this at the tip of their nose. Some people it's more pronounced than others. I'm going to really make it pronounced on this guy. Bring that out into the wings of the nose. There we go. Don't want it to feel too much like he's got a butt crack there, so let's fill it in a little bit. Alright. So let's go ahead and save our work. And going in with the standard brush, I'm just going to start sketching into the ear here. Let's make the hole inside the ear, the conch of the ear. And I'm going to mask out the inner form of the ear, which is called the antitragus, or the antihelix, excuse me. Invert that mask, and then using clay tubes, I'll just mask that out. Invert that mask again. And using the move brush, I'm going to pull out the outer rim of the ear, which is called the helix. I'm just going to tuck that over the inner form, the anti helix. And 
and this leg here, the helix, dips down into the ear. So I'm going to pull this shape down. out the ear a little bit. <clears throat> I'm going to revisit the eyes now. I'm going to raise the lower lid, narrow the eye a touch. Just mask out the lower lid so we can work the upper lid. I'm going to mask out the, the skeletal structure of the eye socket as well. And let's tug down the upper lid here. The inside corner of the eye is further forward in the outside corner. The outside corner comes back. And that cheekbone is a little too far back now in relation to the eye, I think. So let's pull that forward. Going in with the standard brush and just tucking this back so the eyelids are conforming to the sphere of the eye. It's going to mask right up to that lower edge of the sphere of the eyeball. back in with the polish brush. That's uh, M polish. And just think about some of the planes here. turn on alpha 1 and I'm just going to start stroking along the direction that I want the major folds of flesh to be flowing. And I need to take the move brush in here and just tuck that inner corner of the eye in and make sure that this area here is clearly defined. It's getting a little general and soft down in there. I need there to be a deep hole here in the inner corner of the eye socket. <coughs> Do a bit of smoothing there, a little bit of smoothing there, and just take the move brush and tuck that back. back in with the clay tubes brush.
looking at them from the underside, I'm thinking it might be cool to bring this form out. So it's angling back like that. change the orientation on the ears again, just masking out the ears. Invert that mask and again just use the rotate transpose line to rotate them back and shift them back a little bit. using the move brush just to widen the face just a little bit. <clears throat> and with the clay tubes brush turning off that alpha coming back into the sternomastoid muscle. Let's bring the chest forward the traps up. Do a light touch of smoothing there. And let's tuck this back. We want to get the pit of the neck in there. those clavicles a bit. And going in with the standard brush, just gonna pick a few little areas of shadow here. Again, I stress this is all coming out of a single sphere, a single polysphere in ZBrush.